Arthur Sioka's grandparents were poor Italian immigrants. Their struggles and those of his own parents would influence Arthur's values and work ethic for years to come. My father worked his way through school, all the time supporting himself and supporting his mother. He was a very dedicated, almost public servant, on call seven days a week, 24 hours a day. He set high standards for himself, for all the rest of us as well. My mother was a typical Italian housewife. She was really the glue that held our, our family together. Along with his parents, Arthur's grandfather was an important role model. He was a blacksmith who commuted from this small town uh, 20 miles into New York City. I can still hear him in broken English saying, in this country, in America, you can do anything you want to do if you're willing to work hard, very hard, and uh, keep out of trouble. Arthur worked his way through high school and then college at Holy Cross, doing a variety of jobs, cleaning, painting, clerking in a bank, and heavy construction. While on a midshipman's cruise his junior year in college, Art sailed beneath the Golden Gate Bridge into San Francisco. It was a moment that would change his life. I will never forget standing at attention on the deck of this carrier, thinking to myself what, a, what an extraordinary place San Francisco was. I made up my mind that I wanted to live here. After college, stationed at Great Lakes Naval Training Center, Arthur took the opportunity to work for an MBA degree. My uh, responsibilities in the Navy required me to get to work about six in the morning, and I didn't leave until five or six at night. I'd throw down a quick meal and go off to school at night. Eventually, Art decided to enter the wine business. Learning the wine business from Ernest Gallo, he eventually took over the reins at Franzia, recently purchased by Coca-Cola. The day Coke decided to get out of the wine business, Art Sioka took one of his biggest risks at a company board meeting. I said something to the effect, this is a good company, and if you don't want it, I'll buy it. Of course, I didn't have 10 cents to my name. Basically leveraged everything I had in this world to uh, transact that deal. It was a calculated risk. Art's business risk-taking paid off, but in 1995, he would meet the greatest test of his life. Going out for a bicycle ride, and as I was coming down the hill, I was going faster than I should have been. I was distracted by uh, a truck that was behind me, so I turned around. And when I turned forward, a young girl had made a left-hand turn in front of me. I hit her going about 35 miles an hour and did a half gainer, came down through the back windshield. I learned after the fact that um, I had less than 50-50 chance of making it. I think the thing that I learned the most from it was that uh, when I realized that I might not have made it, I realized how many things I would have left undone. I'm spending a lot more time doing the things that are important instead of the things that contribute to business success. When I met Art, he had leveraged everything he owned for a dream. He said to me, I, you know, I don't have a whole lot to offer you, um, but I'll either be really successful or I may not be successful. Something in my heart told me that he would, he would do it, and I wanted to take the ride. My grandfather was right. You can do anything in this world that you want to do if you're willing to work hard enough to do it.